Now quiet, everybody. No talking while the program's on. There's no need to fear. Underdog is here. Time again for the Underdog Show, starring that champion of champions, Underdog. surface of the ocean, unknown to the rest of the world, was the kingdom of Maldemer, the home of a sinister people called Bubbleheads, who ruled the vast watery world beneath the seven seas. were in turn ruled by the emperor, who was in turn ruled by the empress. Pay attention to me when I'm talking to you. Uh, yes, my dear. What have you done about taking over the dry land? I told you I'm sick and tired of this wet, wet world. I want to rule on dry land. Dry, dry, dry. Uh, I, I have one of our best scientists working on the problem, <laughs> sweetie pie. <laughs> I will ask for a report. You ring? Uh, report. I have completed a machine that will destroy the landmen. What is it? What is it? A volcano machine, Majesty. Show me. If you will come with me. Here is the volcano machine. You see, I simply start pumping. And you watch this mountain on the television screen. Scientist number two to work on the project. I'll have him report. You hang? Yes. <clears throat> have you invented a way to take over the land? Yes, O oh, Emperor. I have invented an earthquake machine. Let's see it. Let's see it. It is simple. This giant shack is right on just the United States. Watch on the television screen while I turn the shack. <laughs> To the clam. No, 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 no. Well? Uh, there's uh, one more scientist, uh, sweetie. <laughs> uh, he's our very best. Have him report. Yurang. Uh, <clears throat> what have you done about a machine to destroy the land people? I have invented a tidal wave machine. It will stir up the sea until a great wave will pour over the land and wash away all the people and the land will be yours. Demonstrate. Observe. Out in the middle of the ocean, I have built a huge agitator. It will churn back and forth, and the waves will grow bigger and bigger until... Tidal wave! Tidal wave! Turn it on! Turn it on! Wait. 
working. It's working. It's working. Uh, it'll take time. But when this needle gets to here, a giant tidal wave will wipe out the land people. Will the machine work? What chance has the world against such a tidal wave? What can Underdog do? There's plenty of excitement ahead in our next episode. Stay tuned. We will. We will. We'll be right back with more cartoons after this. Go, speed racer, go. He's open flying as he guns a car around the track. He's jamming down the pedal oh, like he's never gone come back. Catch up to Speed Racer tonight at 1 a.m., 12 Central on MeTV Tunes. Whether because of discomfort, lack of mobility, your lifestyle, or occupation, you sit inactively way too many hours a day. That sedentary inactivity is terrible for your health. It's time to add some extra steps to your day. Introducing Ellipse, the premium quality automatic seated exerciser that strengthens legs, increases mobility, and boosts circulation without physical strain or impact. It's the easiest exercise you will ever do. Ellipse fits perfectly under my desk, and it is so quiet that none of my coworkers even know I'm using it. Strengthen and tone your legs. Increase your mobility, flexibility, and balance. Plus, stimulate healthy circulation. My joints feel better. My knees feel better. My back feels better. It makes me feel stronger, too. Power-assisted exercise that frees your mind to enjoy your favorite seated activities. Perfect for home therapy. Whisper quiet to use while you work. My circulation is moving. I'm burning calories, and it makes me feel energetic. Plug it in, place your feet, select your speed, and relax. Ellipse does all the work. Loosen stiff joints and tight muscles, reduce swelling, alleviate cramps, and calm restless legs. Ellipse is so smooth, so easy on my joints. My legs are stronger, my joints are no longer stiff. I can walk without pain. My mobility is as good as it was 20 years ago. Other seated exercises produce harsh, jarring movement, but Ellipse's 46% larger rotational diameter provides more exercise plus ultra-smooth motion that's safe, super low impact, and feels great. Call now and order Ellipse, the seated exerciser that strengthens legs, increases mobility, and boosts circulation. Be one of the first 300 callers and get upgraded to the Ellipse Deluxe Bundle, a $100 value. You. Yours free. Get the faster motor that produces more than five miles worth of steps per hour. A non slip mat and wireless remote. Call now. And now, Amy TV Tunes. Tune. Friendly, friendly, that's what I want to be. I try to make a friend of everybody that I see. Friendly, friendly, that's what I'll always be. And you will make me happy if you'll just be friends with me. Watch Casper and other cartoons every day on MeTV Tunes. We now return to more classic cartoons. Let them have it. On MeTV Tunes. Skiing is becoming one of America's most popular sports. It seems like everyone is skiing. Short and tall, young and old, thin and fat. And the owners of ski areas are making lots and lots of money. That's it. That's just what we need around here. A ski area. That big hill in the middle of the park will be perfect. Come on, we'll go tell Stanley. Think of it, Stanley. Our own ski area right here in the Megapolis Zoo. We'll be famous. The whole world will be talking. The whole world will be laughing. This is a zoo, not a ski resort. Besides, it never snows around here. It's a crazy idea. No, 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 no. But there must be something you can ski on besides snow. Let me... No, no. Now, don't you start fooling around. The mayor is due to drop in on one of his inspection trips, and I want everything perfect. Now, out. Out, out. But... Out! Mm. No snow. But after all, what is snow? Just something cold and slippery. Mm, like ice cubes. Ice cubes. That's it, Chumley. And where do ice cubes come from? Refrigerators. Right. Come on. We've got work to do. Yeah. yeah. Flunky. Flunky! What's all this food doing on the kitchen floor? And where is the refrigerator? Uh, well, gee, boss, that's what I was just coming to tell you. Refrigerators is missing all over the zoo. Hmm. Well, now, who'd want to steal all the refrigerators? Tennessee, Tennessee tuxedo. tuxedo! There we are, Chumley. 
A whole hill covered with ice cubes. What a ski slide. Uh, gee, Tennessee, it looks a little lumpy to me. Nonsense, Chumley. It's just fun. Let's go. Ice cubes. Thousands of them. All over the hill. Come on. I still say it's too lumpy. But, 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 but it's but, but, but fast. It can't be much longer, Flunky. And I'll bet we find that pesky penguin at the bottom of it all. Whee! Tennessee Tuxedo! Uh, boy, Stanley sure was mad. He took back all the refrigerators and the ice cubes. Well, the ice cube idea wasn't so hot, Chumley. Those cubes are too lumpy for skiing. What we need is something smooth and cold. Uh, like ice cream? Ice cream. Ice cream. Chumley, that's it. You're a genius. Come on. What? The ice cream machine has been stolen from the cafeteria? Well, I'll look into it. What? You say the ice cream machine has been stolen from the refreshment stand? Yeah, I'll investigate. Hey, hey boss, boss, somebody stole the ice cream machine. I from... know, I know. There's a regular epidemic. Yeah, well, who'd want a bunch of ice cream machines? Tennessee, Tennessee tuxedo. tuxedo. What did I tell you, Chumley? What did I tell you? We're going to make history with this idea. Uh, yeah, the world's first pistachio ski slide. <laughs> Don't laugh, Chumley. This is going to work. It's smooth and cold and slippery, just like snow. Yeah, and you can eat it, too. Never mind, never mind. Let's try it. It works! It works! Tennessee Tuxedo will not fail. There they are. There they are, skiing down the hill. Skiing? Well, what are they skiing on? It can't be. It can't be. But I think it's... Ice cream! Look out! Look out! Uh, boy, Stanley sure gets made easy. Uh, just because he fell in the ice cream. Uh, personally, I liked it. Well, the ice cream was a little cold and sticky. I'm sure there must be something to ski on besides snow. What's the slipperiest thing you can think of, Chumley? Uh, grease? That's it! And where do you get grease? In a garage, right? Let's go. But sometime later, when Stanley Livingston drove into the zoo garage... Yeah, I want a complete grease job, Flunky. I don't want any squeaks when I drive the mare around the zoo. Uh, there isn't any grease. I just had 10 50-gallon cans delivered last week. Well, it's all gone now. Well, someone must have taken it. But who? Tennessee, Tennessee Tuxedo. How about that? 500 gallons of grease all over the hill. Let's try it. There they are. There are all the oil drums. Well, I'll just climb up to the top and see if I can see where that pesky penguin is. Charlie, you left all the oil drums right in the middle of the trail. I can't stop. Look out! <laughs> yeah, I can't stand anymore. I can't. You have Tennessee tuxedo. There is not going to be any snow. You can't have a ski slope without snow. So forget it. Now clean up this mess. The mayor is due any day now. And if you do anything to spoil his visit, I'll ship you back to the South Pole and you can ski yourself silly. Chumley, I've been thinking. Uh-oh. Stanley's right. What we need is real snow. Let's go see Mr. Whoopi. Snow, is it? Well, now, let's see whether we can get the drift of that. <laughs> First, we have to know what snow is. Frozen rain? No, but snow comes from clouds, just as rain does. Snow is frozen water vapor. When the water vapor freezes, it forms tiny crystals of ice, which we call snowflakes. A snowflake may be just one crystal, or it may be many sticking together. Up close, we can see that the snowflake has six sides and that none of them are exactly alike. But they're all beautiful. But how do you make snow? Just like nature does, my boy. Here, let me show you. Snow machines very often look exactly like machine guns, except the two hoses are fastened to the gun. One hose carries water and one carries compressed air. 
The water and air are mixed inside the gun and are forced out under pressure in the form of fine mist or vapor. Just like a cloud. Right. And if the temperature outside is below 27 degrees, the water vapor freezes. And whoopee! It snows and you can cover the whole hill. Uh, but where can we get all that stuff? Hoses and guns? I just happen to know a man who can fix you up with the whole business. Now you go over to this address. Look at that, Chumley. A regular blizzard. We'll have this old hill covered with snow in no time. And sure enough, it wasn't long before there was enough snow for skiing, and Tennessee and Chumley were shushing down the slope, practicing their Christie's and Galenda sprungs, and occasionally making a graceful sits mark. Uh, gee, Tennessee, this is fun. I told you, Chumley, Tennessee Tuxedo does not fail. When Stanley sees how great this is, he'll want to join in the fun. Yes, and here on the top of the hill, Mr. Mayor, you can see the whole city on this side. And over on this side was where that ridiculous penguin thought he was going to make a ski slide. Have you ever heard of anything so... Help! Boy, that's some fun. Stanley will be dropping in any minute now, or won't he be surprised? Stanley! Uh, the mayor. Mm, Tennessee tuxedo. You wait till I get my hands on you. Now, Stanley. Just a minute, Stanley. You. I'll give you snow. I think we better leave until Stanley cools off. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after these messages. Every relationship has its ups and downs. The Tom and Jerry Show, weekdays at 5, 4 central on MeTV Tunes. That should hold it for now. Mm. What should we do? I know what to do. You do? I'm going to CashNetUSA.com. I can apply in minutes, and if approved, we can have the money in our account as soon as the same business day. You're my hero. Saving the day is easy with CashNet USA. When you need money fast, be the hero. Go to CashNetUSA.com to apply for the money you need now. And Jerry and more are on me TV tunes we're back with more cartoon fun continuing now I'm trying to focus uh, I say sergeant think I'll take a short nap go right ahead Colonel I'll call you in a half an hour ah uh, be sure you do remember we're going berry picking this afternoon yes sir I wouldn't want to miss that. Delicious wild berries. Yes, indeed. Nothing like them. You think Colonel Eat go for berries? Oh, no. If him do, no tell him what happened. We go try stop Colonel. Hurry. Uh -huh. Look there, Sergeant. A fine patch of wild berries all ripe for picking. I don't think you better trust those, Colonel. Might be gopher berries. Gopher berries? Yep. Folks say anybody eats gopher berries has all kinds of things happen to them. Nonsense, Sergeant. Army Regulation 346218 specifically says... Eat uh, Yes. Uh, berries uh, are berries. Too late now. 
Uh-oh. Too late now. You see, Sergeant, I ate the berries and absolutely nothing happened to... I say absolutely nothing happened to... Well, stomp my spurs. Those berries made you a real giant, Colonel. Yes, Sergeant. And the Army teaches us to take advantage of every opportunity. And this is my opportunity to get rid of those gopher Indians. There they are. You said them. Run for lives. Hooray! And this time, you gophers haven't a chance. Cave up my head. Hurry! Think you can get away, do you? Well, you'll find that nothing can stop the army. I'll just... What happened, Colonel? They hit my finger, but they won't escape me now. What you gonna do, Colonel? I'll smoke them out. <laughs> oh, you say tunnel have upstairs door. Be doopy. All right, gophers. Toss out your weapons and... <laughs> Colonel, you all right? An outrage, but they won't get away. Charge! Go, go! You're right. Colonel catch it up to us, and we in Dead End Canyon. What we do? Do nothing. This is the end for you. <laughs> What did he say? Uh, him say, be kind. Gopher Indian's always your friend. Ha! I'm going to give you both the thrashing you... <coughs> the thrashing you... <laughs> now gopher berries make Colonel into tiny midget. Now it's our turn to thrash Colonel. No! Don't! Have mercy! Take pity on me! I beg you! Don't do it! Don't! Colonel! Colonel, wake up! Uh, uh, what? Hmm? What's, I, what's I, that? I said wake up, Colonel. It's time for us to go berry picking. Oh, ber what? Berry picking? No! Never! 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 Well, you all be with us for our next adventure. It ought to be for the berries, too. We'll be right back with more cartoons after these messages. Get out of here. Welcome to Cartoon College. Today's subject is the Bugs and Daffy rivalry. The friction between Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck spans many decades and many memorable shorts. It's cause nearly always Daffy's envy of his ever popular co-star. And when the sparks fly, it's always the duck who gets burned. Okay, roll him. Remember, Elma, you're not supposed to cut the limb all the way through. Ha! Goodbye, rabbit. You're gonna be a falling star. <laughs> okay, print it. In the 1951 classic, Rabbit Fire, Bugs is, as usual, <laughs> much quicker with his wits. Let's try that again. Okay. I'll start it this time. Right. Wabbit season. Duck season. Wabbit season. Wabbit season. Duck season. Fire! Showbiz Bugs puts the rivals in a talent show where Daffy tries to upstage or sabotage Bugs. You can probably guess how that works out. I'll be your volunteer. This whole thing is a fake. The way it's done is very simple. Fake feet out one end, and I'm all scrunched up in this end. The oldest trick in the book. His turban is a fake, too. Just a hotel towel. Don't applaud him. Look, I'm not cut in half. Stop applauding. It's a fake. Hmm. Good thing I got Blue Cross. In the end, no matter the bashing and bruising, Bugs and Daffy remain BFFs. That's best foes forever. Well, no 
Looney Tunes, and more are on MeTV Tunes. We're back with more cartoon fun, continuing now. The bubble-headed people who lived at the bottom of the ocean had created a machine to make a huge tidal wave to wash away all the people who lived on land. It's working! It's working! Yes, and when the needle gets to there... Tidal wave! Soon, the whole civilized world was aware that something peculiar was happening to the ocean. And no one seems to know the cause of the increasing storminess of the sea. However, we have with us the world's leading authority on the sea, Professor Moby von Ahab. <laughs> Professor von Ahab. <laughs> Just call me Moby. All right, Moby. I understand that you have located the source of the disturbance. Certainly. And it is right here in the middle of the ocean. And today... I am setting out for that very spot when I'm going to the bottom in the bathosphere to investigate. Oh, how thrilling. I wish I could come along and televise the whole thing for our viewers. Oh, but you can, my dear. I'd be delighted to have you. Did you hear that? If those fools come down here with a television camera, the whole world will know of our plan. They must be stopped. <laughs> We will soon be over the spot, and then we will get to the bottom of this. Release the whales! 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 By tune, they're going to attack! They'll sink the ship! Underdog! Underdog! Oh, my underdog gone. Oh, where, oh, where can he be? And far away on the mainland, disguised as humble, lovable shoeshine, underdog's atomic ears heard the cry for help, and quickly <laughs> darting into a telephone booth. When Polly's in trouble, I am not slow. It's hip, 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 and away I go. <laughs> I can't believe it. Our biggest whales. Never mind. We should wait until the professor and the nosy reporter come down to the bottom. Then we can deal with them. Oh, thank you, Underdog. We shall be quite safe now. Nothing can harm us in the bathosphere. Then I will go, for I must do heroic deeds for others, too. No army! Here we are, television viewers, on the bottom of the ocean. Just look at that magnificent scenery. All those beautiful fish. But wait, what strange creatures are these approaching? They look like... why they... The screen's gone black. Professor? Professor, are you there? No answer. Something's happened down there. What will the bubbleheads do to Polly and the professor? Can Underdog rescue them? Don't miss the thrills ahead in our next exciting episode.